it's December already. What happened? Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. Today we are doing the Colors of the Month Challenge for December. I wasn't planning on doing this video today. I wasn't planning on holding off until Wednesday this week. I had two possible video ideas planned for this week. One of them is a really long, big effort thing that I've been frankly putting off for months <laughs> and haven't done it yet. I am going to do it this month before the end of the year. Worst teaser ever, haven't told you what it is. <laughs> I also have something coming that I could do a product review for that I'm really excited about. And it was supposed to be here yesterday on Tuesday and yeah, it's not here yet. So I waited until Wednesday so that we could do the new Colors of the Month challenge. If you're not familiar with the Colors of the Month challenge, this is a limited color palette challenge issued by Marker Universe. These guys used to be Imagination International. They used to run the website copicmarker.com. This was when they were the exclusive distributor for Copic products in North America. But of course, two years ago now, Copic decided to cut out middleman distributors. These guys, they had to rebrand. They had to start selling other brands, other types of markers, marker accessories, whatnot. So they're MarkerUniverse.com now. They sell all sorts of brands. They ship to the USA and Canada. So they went from doing their three color Copic colors challenge, where they picked three particular Copic colors and said go for it, and they sold special packs of those markers. They went from doing that to just picking three random colors and saying go for it, use whatever medium you want, match in whatever brand you want. And then this year they decide let's up the ante, let's do four colors. So that's where we are. This is the 12th four color challenge that they have issued. I don't know if they're going to be doing anything differently next year. They seem to change it every year now. Seems to be the thing. We haven't heard any whispers yet, but basically the rules of this challenge are they will give you four colors. They give the color a name and they give it a hex code and you get to go match that color as close as possible using whatever you want. You can even go digital. You use all four colors. You can use three of them, two of them, just one, whatever. You can add black, you can use white, you can mix and blend and dilute. You just don't get to add other colors. I looked at my email inbox today and I saw the colors. I was quite excited. They're very red and browns, very nice and fur, very animal. They're definitely going with a coffee theme. They are calling the colors Hot Cocoa, Latte, Mocha, and Espresso. The hex codes are 70423E for Hot Cocoa, DDC3A1 for Latte, A84F48 for Mocha, and A5342B for Espresso. Now, normally, when you click through to their website on these select color palette challenges, there will be a custom shop page where they have hand selected these colors in the brands that they sell so that it's really easy for you to go and shop and get those exact markers. They haven't done that yet. I don't know if I'm there too early or if they're losing interest in this or if they're just really low on stock and didn't think it was worth it. If you go to that page, you're just going to get a deal on their 2021 blind box. It's regularly $50 US, it's currently on sale for $40 US, go grab one if you want their blind box. But anyway, <laughs> so I had to come up with my own list of suggested colors. I did this by having their picture of the four colors open in one tab and then color charts of different brands open in another tab. And I was just trying to match based on what I saw on my screen. It's a difficult task. Some of those color charts are not reliable. First off, let's go with hot cocoa. The hex code checker I put it in described it as a very dark desaturated red, but then I put it in a different one and it said a medium dark shade of red. So I don't know. I would definitely describe it as a very warm, slightly desaturated brown, a red brown. It's around a six or seven on a one to nine tone scale. It's definitely a red based brown. It's a little desaturated. Based purely on online images of color charts, I thought that some suitable colors for this might be Copic E18 Copper, Sketch Marker BR30 Bordeaux, Ohuhu Y12 Mahogany, Tombow Dual Brush Pen 969 Chocolate, or Winsor Newton Pro Marker 0224 Burnt Mahogany. 
I happened to actually go with my Copic suggestion, the Copic E18 Copper. That surprised me. The name Copper just sounds more orange to me, but it wasn't. Next up, Latte is the lightest color. It's very much a creamy, fawn sort of color. The Hex website describes it as a medium light shade of brown, similar to durian white. Based on online color charts, I thought that a perfect match would be Copic E31 Brick Beige, Sketch Marker BR84 Latte, Ohuhu Y11 Brown Gray, Tombow Dual Brush Pen 942 Cappuccino, or Windsor Newton Pro Marker 0928 Sandstone. This one was an interesting one to match. E31 from the Copic Brick Beige, that is a very close one. Brick Beige in Ohuhu E210, that's also very close. And Ohuhu E280, Sand White, that's also very close. What I ended up going with was a Windsor Newton. Not the one I picked from my chart, but 0928, which is Sandstone. I'm not sure why that wasn't on my radar looking at the online swatches. The color I picked for Ohuhu with the online swatches was brown gray. I don't have a brown gray, but my yellow gray was very close, so the brown gray is probably a bit warmer. It probably would also be a very good match for this one. Moving on to the mocha color, that hex site just said a shade of red. Very descriptive. One of the similar two color names was Deep Chestnut. Looking at the online charts, I thought that Copic E17 Reddish Brass would be a good match. I thought Sketch Marker R11 Shale would match, Ohuhu E060 Light Mahogany, Tombow Dual Brush Pen 977 Saddle Brown, or Windsor Newton Pro Marker R946 Burnt Orange. Now, I don't have Windsor Newton Burnt Orange, but I do think that would be perfect. I ended up going with Copic E09 Burnt Sienna, which ironically I thought would match the next color, so there's that. A very close second, not quite right, a little too orange, was Ohuhu YR5 Terracotta. And finally, the Espresso color. The Hex site said that this was also a shade of red, and one of the similar color names was Firebrick, and that really caught my attention, because Windsor Newton used to have a color called Firebrick in their collection, and I have it, so I will be using it, but it's not included in their online swatch charts anymore, so I think the color has been discontinued. I thought that the Copic E09 Burnt Sienna would match this one fairly well. I picked it for the previous color. So that is telling me that if you were to go exclusively with Copics, you would need something a little more saturated and a little more red for the Copic than the E09 Burnt Sienna that I ended up picking for the previous color. Other colors that I thought might match, Sketch Marker R110 Bloody Red, Ohuhu R160 Cadmium Red, Tombow Dual Brush Pen 847 Crimson, and alternatively for Windsor Newton, R445 Crimson. So the theme here definitely err on the side of red for this last color, rather than going for more of a orange or yellow based brown. I do have Firebrick. So Windsor and Newton R735 Firebrick, that is the name of the color. It is a perfect match for this espresso color, on at least in the online charts. That's what I'm using. If you don't have it, err more on the side of a very dark, desaturated red than a orange or yellow based brown. I have done this voiceover before I started doing my art because it's already almost two o'clock in the afternoon and I might have to go straight from art into cooking supper. So <laughs> I wanted to make sure that this voiceover was done so I could edit. So I have no idea what I've drawn. You tell me. What, what did I draw? I don't know yet. <laughs> I hope it looks good. I hope it turned out well. I am excited to use these colors. I think they go w really well together. It is definitely giving an animal fur vibe, a forest vibe. It could be a wintry scene. I could, like I did for that fox in November two years ago, I could just leave parts of the page white to be snow. I don't know. We'll see. So coming up on Friday, I will definitely be doing a product review because that product I'm waiting on should be here and probably next week will be that bigger video I've planned. Keep an eye out for the final Art Addicts Alliance collaboration of the year. That's coming up two weeks from Friday. Also, heads up, I am actually 
going to BC to visit my family for the first time in two years. You know, first time since all this craziness started. So my channel will be taking its usual Christmas holiday break. I might start it a little earlier and not go so far into January. Normally I try to go right up to Christmas and then go two weeks after that, but I might, I don't know. We will figure it out. I will let you guys know well in advance when the channel is going to go dark for probably two weeks so that I don't have to upload while I'm not here. If you're looking for more to watch, I've got some suggestions up on the left side of the screen now. Don't forget to like, comment, maybe even subscribe, and if you like living life creatively, whatever that means to you, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Bye guys!